Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister. Such a painful story, such a painful story. The message, it reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, my father, he came from Malawi, but my mom, she was a Zimbabwean. My mom has since passed away because I was tricked. And when I saw this other confession that you posted, when you mentioned that there was this other man who met these fallen angels in a mountain there in Koromonzi, my heart started beating really fast. Even right now, I am scared to mention the name of that mountain in which I went to because I know that even in that mountain, there are some fallen angels and I met one. My father, after he had been working for this other white man, I don't know if you still remember during those years when there was the land reform program. So when this land reform program started, then a lot of people, they started to grab uh, some land that belonged to the white people. Unfortunately for my father, since he was from Malawi, he was also caught in that crossfire because at the place where we were staying my father was being treated really nicely by that british man so when the comrades came to take the house after they had taken the farm they also told my father that it was time for him to move on and then since my father he had never returned back to malawi lucky enough he went and he spoke with this other village chief and he told that village chief that he had nowhere else to go so the village chief then called one of the village headmen who ended up cutting a small piece of land for my father and my father ended up building his home and all of this time we had been staying like in the nearby town that was close to the village where we finally started staying so as for me i was really confused because as someone who had grown who had grown up in the city now living in the villages it was something that was really tough because people used to say that i was really intelligent as intelligent as i was but my brother i have nothing to show for it right now i am living in a foreign country where i am surviving working as a prostitute whenever i think about my story when i think that i once saw an angel it pains me a lot because when i saw this angel the angel made me to think that i was really special but what i want to tell people out there is that when you see an angel don't just automatically think that every angel that you see it represent god because i was trapped by this angel and i thought that indeed i was going to be this great person i was going to be this great woman i met this angel one day after i had been chased away from school because my parents they could no longer afford to pay for my school fees and since i was like in the a class there were a lot of things that were needed a lot of books and we had to do a lot of extra lessons but i could not keep up because we used to go for chemistry biology and physics so all of those extra lessons they were too expensive so i ended up dropping out of school the last day that i went to school when i had been chased from school because of late payment of the school fees i then started walking back home so from the place where my father had built his home to the school it was around about 10 kilometers but we used to pass through this other mountain so as i was returning back from school i then started walking when i was in that mountain that was when i felt really hungry and i knew that back home there was no food and probably my parents they had gone somewhere to do a peace job and if they would see that i am back from school they would tell me to come and join them so that we can finish up that peace job that they would have gotten because my father and my mother they used to go around doing some gardening work as well as working in the fields for other people so i didn't want to do that i felt so lazy and i was feeling disappointed on that day so as i was walking in that mountain i said let me find some fruits so that i can eat whilst i am resting when it is time when 
my parents know that it is time for us to knock off from school that is when i wait for the other kids then i will join up with the other kids then i will return back to my parents house as i was looking for some fruits to eat i then came across this other tree that is called mutsubu in brackets it is called chocolate berry tree in english so i then look i then started to pick up the fruits of that tree then i found a perfect spot on a rock then i sat down then i started to eat because this rock it was underneath this other big tree so the sun was really hot but underneath that tree there was a cool shade so i started eating whilst i was eating my brother that was when i saw this very beautiful woman that just appeared out of nowhere and what surprised me about this woman was that she was like a white woman so in our village i had never seen a white woman before so i thought that maybe she had gotten lost or anything and the strange thing that happened when i saw this woman i didn't get scared but I wanted to know who she was and where she was going to so, so this woman when i saw her she then started walking amongst the trees and i started following her and we went up the mountain until she went into this other dark cave so when she entered into that cave that was when i panicked and i really got so scared because i had had some other boys that we went to school with they had told us several stories about that cave there was one boy who had said that he had seen this other creature that is called Toto that has a one eye in the middle of its face. So I got so scared and I said, no, let me return back. And when I was about to turn back, that was when I saw this woman. She came out of that cave. Then she started to look around as if she was looking for something. And I looked at her, my brother. She had such beautiful hair and as for her skin it glittered as if her skin was made out of diamonds and she turned around and i then said let me follow her this woman is too beautiful maybe she can assist me maybe she can offer my father a job in that moment i didn't even think that this woman that i was looking at she was not even a human being but she was nothing but a fallen angel so i then started to follow her into that cave i had lost all fear my brother when i followed her into that cave that was when everything just went blank and i heard this echo that i still hear up until this day then i started to feel really tired and i fell down and i fell fast asleep i only woke up my brother from around about 11 a.m when i woke up it was somewhere around 6 p.m then i started to run down the mountain then i returned back home i lied to my parents that the teachers had given me a punishment because i had not paid my school fees in time this is what the teachers at our school used to do when i went into my sleeping quarters i was stressed because of the way that we were poor just when i was about to fall asleep i saw that outside there was a bright light and i said maybe this is just the moon but when i kept on looking i then saw that this bright light it kept on bouncing around and i had never seen the moon bouncing in the sky so i then opened the curtain just a little bit and i saw that there was a woman who was busy dancing in the skies and then i felt really scared as that woman was flying down towards our house and the next thing that happened was that i saw this woman she was sitting in my room and she told me not to be afraid so i was trembling with fear this woman came and she said i said fear not and when i say fear not you do not have to be afraid so i felt my heart as if it was frozen this woman then told me that she had been sent to me by my ancestors as well as by god and she was going to bless me with the gift of healing i was going to be a healer a traditional healer sort of like a traditional healer and she told me that i was going to be taken one day by the river spirits where i was going to stay in the river for at least two days or more and i was supposed to lie to my 
parents that I had found a job somewhere in the city so that they won't cry. For if they were going to cry, if they find out that I had been taken by a maymaid, then the maymaid was going to kill me. So from there on, this woman kept on visiting me. She kept on showing me a lot of sacred places in that same village where we were staying she would tell me to climb up this mountain and she will meet me at the top of the mountain sometimes when she would meet me at the on top of the mountain she would transform herself and she would become a python she would then say do not be afraid for it is i who has possessed the body of this python i have possessed this python so that i can receive this gift that you are about to present to me then i will take the chicken or the two chickens that i would have brought for this fallen angel then that python it will bite the chicken but instead Instead of swallowing the whole chicken like we know what pythons do when they are eating whatever prey that they would have caught but this python that will be possessed by that fallen angel it will just bite then it will start to suck the blood from that chicken i did this for many days until one day when me and my friends had gone to the river to wash our clothes by the river so after we had washed our clothes then i heard a very soft faint voice that spoke from the river this voice said i want you to remain behind for i have something that i want to give you so when my friends had finished bathing i then told my friends that i was waiting for someone they just laughed as they left me because they thought that i was waiting for my boyfriend but i was not waiting for my boyfriend at all i wanted to hear what this voice wanted to tell me and i wanted to see what kind of a gift this voice wanted to give me the soft voice that had spoken with me from the river so when my friends left me i then saw the river spirit oh they are very beautiful my brother the maymaid came out and just like that fallen angel i saw that his skin it seemed as if she was made out of pure gold and she was dark in color just like us africans even her hair it was not as smooth as the white people's hair but her hair was really long and beautiful at the same time she then told me that i was supposed to return back to the same river late at night and when it was dark i had already told my parents that there was this other woman who had told me that she wanted to give me a peace job and this woman had already given me some money this may maid was the one who gave me the money that i gave to my parents my brother my mom said it is fine she even said that it was late she wanted to accompany me but i said it is fine it is fine let me go alone so i walked my brother i was walking and at the same time i was running because i really wanted to go and see this beautiful maid that i had seen before when i arrived at that place where we used to do our laundry in the village i then saw that this river even though it was a flowing river but at the center of that river when i looked and when i looked again to double check if everything that i was seeing was real i saw that indeed everything that i saw was real because the water was avoiding the center of the river such that you could actually see the riverbed and out of the riverbed i saw that same maid but now she no longer had that tail that made her to look as if she was a fish but she actually was walking on her two feet she invited me she just used some sign language to invite me and i got so scared when i got scared to get into the river then there was a whirlwind that suddenly appeared out of nowhere this whirlwind it grabbed me and threw me into the center of the river and everything just vanished again and i found myself that i was underneath the river and underneath the river there are houses down there but these people that stay in the water what i saw is that they stay in the caves because like inside this river i saw that there are a lot of tunnels and caves and that is where we were staying when we were down there the food that i was given to eat it was your snails as well as that 
thick soil that you can find by the edge of the river. That is what we were given to eat. But to my surprise, everything that I was given to eat, it really tasted good. But now I don't think that I can ever take a snail so that I can eat that snail because they seem to be really nasty. But when we were down there, that is this is what we used to eat so i was taught how to go into the forest and to collect different herbs and i was also taught that this kind of a disease it will cure this type of a disease and i was taught that when someone is possessed by a demon this is what you do and you can if you use this tree if you can bend the leaves of this tree then the demon will run away after I had been taught all of these things, that was when I found myself out of the water. And the first thing that happened to me is that I felt this lustfulness. I started to lust after my own biological father and I ended up sleeping with him. When I returned back home, along the way, I had been told that I was going to find this handbag that was going to be full of money. All that I had to do was to remove the money and thank the maymaids and my ancestors so i then found this handbag that was full of money and i returned back home i then gave my father some of the money and he went and he bought some alcohol at our home on that day it was as if there was a big party but we didn't invite anyone because a lot of people they used to laugh at us since we were like really poor my mom after she had finished eating she then said that she was too tired of dancing she wanted to go and sleep she went to her bedroom and i continued having a conversation with my father not an honest conversation i said that i wanted to have a conversation with my father but what was in my mind was something that was demonic i was lasting after my own father as he had been dancing i kept on looking at his private parts and i just wanted to taste him i wanted him to taste me i lost my f i I lost my virginity to my biological father. After my mother had gone to the bedroom, that was when I just looked at my siblings and they all fell asleep. I had this kind of power, my brother, to control anyone. When my mom had left, I then looked at my father and I said, I want you to sleep with me. Then he started undressing himself and he came to me. We touched each other. Then we slept with each other from there on it was as if there was a burning fire that was inside my private parts that kept on forcing me to sleep with my father i then ran away and i then went into the city where i started working as a maid and as i was working as a maid the woman whom i was working for i destroyed her marriage because her husband was a handsome man when i would look at him i would actually last after him late at night then i will start to please myself and when i would have finished pleasing myself then i will immediately fall asleep then i'll find myself standing in my madam boss's bedroom and then i'll start to make love with her husband until my boss lady's husband one day said to me i keep on having these weird dreams and i said speak to me then he said that i keep on making love to you in my dreams and it is really nice and i said oh if it is in your dreams then it will stay in your dreams then the man said no come here he then grabbed me violently and to my surprise i enjoyed it brother nashi as he grabbed grabbed me violently and then I started to kiss him and I told him that he was supposed to come to my room late at night. He came and we made love. I kept on sleeping with that man until my boss lady found out and then she kicked me out. From there on, my life went downhill. My So far, I have stayed with 10 different men that I have stayed with and what pains me the most is that I thought that I was going to have a brighter future. I thought that I was someone that was important because of the things that I saw but if you look at me now yes I am very attractive. Any man that I say that this one I want the man will become mine but the man cannot be mine permanently once that person has slept with me it's like there is a spirit in me that just tells me 
that since you have slept with him, why do you want to be with him for the rest of your life? There are more handsome men out there who can actually please you even more in bed. Then I will start to chase after the next man. After I had destroyed that woman's relationship, I kept on being attracted to different men and them being attracted to me and staying together and dumping them and moving on to the next relationship until I became a prostitute. It was when I found myself in Rutenga because I said, let me change locations. I then left my hometown and I came to Rutenga where I started to prostitute myself to the truck drivers that will be coming from South Africa or returning with their lots to South Africa. And from there on, there was this other truck driver who ended up bringing me here to South Africa, but he was actually married. He said that he wanted to marry me, but I knew what I was doing. After he had brought me to South Africa, I ran away from him and I befriended some girls who taught me how to prostitute myself in this country. When I look at my life, when I look at my future, I just see darkness, Brother Nash. I see darkness and what pains me the most is that whenever I feel depressed, my only solution is to end my life because with what I saw, with what is going on in my life, then who else can give me hope? What I saw was supposed to give me hope to live a better life. It is just, but in my life, there is just total darkness. Your dear listeners, right there was a message that I received from our dear sister. Yo, what a sad story, what a sad story. If you ever had a spiritual encounter, feel free either to write in the comment section or to, or to bring your story to my inbox.